three, two, one, and you guys are good to kick off. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm here with Simon Maple. I'm Kyle Suero, and we're going to be talking a little bit about a Security Champions program, what that means, how to start one, why you should, and we're going to give you resources to, to understand all of that. So, um, Simon, would you like to take this time to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thank you very much. And pleasure to be here. So my name is Simon Maple. Uh, I'm the field CTO at Sneak, as you mentioned. Uh, my background is very much in the engineering side. So I've uh, I've been in engineering teams for 20 plus years, uh, doing everything from product development through to developer relations and community, and, and more recently being the field CTO uh, for the last six months at Sneak. Uh, I've been at Sneak about four years now. And actually, over that time as well, I've been doing a lot of research and discussing with security uh, leads about how they create their security champions program. So it's been really interesting for me to learn from many different organizations, some huge and, and, and you know, like uh, the likes of Salesforce and Atlassian trying to create security champions programs across the globe for their thousands of teams to, uh, you know, small startups as well to understand, uh, uh, you know, when is a good time to bring security champions programs in and things like that. So looking forward to the chat today. Awesome. Thank you, Simon. So, um, yeah, my name is Kyle Suero. I was an AppSec engineer at uh, several different places and built out security champions programs during my time there. So um, just a little bit of backstory. You know, I joined a AppSec team. I was the first hire and, um, you know, they had an InfoSec team of about eight people, um, most of whom were mainly in governance. They weren't super technical, um, not, not exactly the programmer type. So... Um, you know, it was really like being thrown in the deep end. I was building out a security champions program while we were on an AppSec program. Um, and I built out the security champions program because I didn't have the support from the rest of the security team that I needed in order to like actually, you know, move fast and fix things, right? So um, basically I had to rely on the developers. The developers have the most intimate knowledge about their own projects and, you know, the company really. Uh, they knew about the technical, you know, underpinnings of it. And um, it really helped me sort of like transform the way that I was able to do my work. So um, we're going to talk about like how beneficial that was for me. But I think first, Simon, uh, maybe we should discuss like what are security champions mm -hmm. and what a security champion program is itself. Yeah. Um, so, so it's a good, uh, good, good starter. I, I think, you know, security champions program is, is, it's kind of like a, it's an official formal program. It's a mechanism in which development teams and security teams can can collaborate, interact, whether that's through education or other programs that they're that they're working on, um, and really for them to to interact in a much more um, seamless way. Um, I think if we look at where you know a security champion should live, well, a security champion is actually a developer. It's they're they're an engineer. They have their their core role is delivering software uh, they are still you know exactly the same as the other engineers on the team however a percentage of that time and typically this is a, a formal percentage to say whether it's 10 percent or 20 percent of that that developer's time they will spend that amount of time doing um secure some security work for the team or education or uh, adding uh you know different aspects into a pipeline maybe that's you know automating security testing and things like that but they essentially are an engineer talking to other engineers about security and i think that's one of the key the key things which which really make that um interaction more more viable actually and and, and people are talking to each other on the same level uh, with the same goals uh and, and i think that's very very different whereas you know perhaps previously when we have security teams talking to development teams they each have different roles they each have very often different goals and they talk to each other at different levels one is talking more from an auditability a, pr a risk process the other is talking thinking about things much more differently from an application and architecture point of view so it really it really brings security for me um to to a much more even playing field when they when the discussions happen at the same level yeah, I think that's um, totally indicative of my experience. As soon as uh, we were able to get like security champions, you know, working, like it was like we had a ton of liaisons to all the teams. They were pulling all the skeletons out of the closet. You know, they were telling us, um, you know, things that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to find, right? Like mm. um, maybe like weak, weak key phrases that were used in multiple places as like, you know, seeds for um, a service, right? So like 
the key was the same and it was everywhere and it was like duplicated across all these places and um it was something that like you know most like we're not going to catch it unless we're specifically looking for that and you know a developer who was there for 12 years came up to me and said kyle like there's this thing it's terrible and like nobody wants to do anything about it so um yeah i think you're 100 percent right you know it, it puts us all on the same page right and we're talking on the same level right we're talking about issues like the same way we're approaching it from the same angle um you know from a security perspective and you know i'm a, I'm a big believer in um the idea that developers want to do the right thing sometimes they're just not enabled to do that right so um one thing that i really took pride in you know like being a security engineer and like working with developers um because i was a developer before and i like know how hard it is was um you know i made their job a lot easier i made them feel like they could come to me for the security stuff and like you know it wasn't going to be like uh you know they weren't going to get yelled at and we weren't just going to like come together and make some decision in a dark room without them right so folks started um you know really acting as liaisons from their team to security like oh like we're we're doing this like how would we do this like or we're planning for this would you be able to you know burp sweet test it for us later or something like that mm -hmm. so um yeah i think 100 percent. like I've, I've seen the exact uh sort of attributes that you're talking about here like play out you know like on on the ground floor so i think um this is a great time for us to probably hop into why would a security I mean, why would an organization consider using a security champions program or facilitating that like why should they mm -hmm. yeah really great question and i think I, I think whenever you want to create a security champions program, you've got to have a reason. And that reason might be different for everyone. Um, sometimes people are thinking about it more from an education point of view and just trying to get that discussion, you know, started about, okay, what are the, what are the types of education per team? How do we, how do we do that across an organization and how we level up? Others might think about it more in terms of a visibility thing. So perhaps the security team don't have the visibility that they want in each of the development organizations or development teams. So by having security champions in each team, it's a great way to actually get that feedback directly and, and see representation across others. And there are a number of reasons why they might be created, but I think the, one of the core reasons in terms of the why for your organization, you need to think about it from the member's point of view. So when you have a security champions program, the vast majority of people in that program are going to be security champions rather than you know folks from the security side or security coaches or mentors, they're sometimes called, but they're going to be security champions. They're going to be developers. So the people you need to ask as to what the value is going to be in joining that program is going to be developers. So you should be talking to your developers and saying, what is it that you want? Is it education? Is it, um, you know, better processes? Is it, um, you know, a cloak just, closer interactions with the security team. What are the core things that you need to be, that you want to fix? Um, and then building your security program around that. Because if you do something which is very much too security, too security oriented or too business oriented, you're not going to necessarily get the value from, you know, the developers, sorry, aren't going to necessarily get the value from the program. And it's a potential sign that the program's not going to necessarily work themselves. So I'd say there are various uh, ways of doing things. Um, one other really strong value that I've seen organizations, um, and this is, I'll, I'll talk about, I'll mention a couple here. Pearson is, is one that are, have an amazing security program. Uh, um, who are Salesforce do this as well, which is, which is incredible as well, which is the idea of, Every every security champion or every security every development team that have a representation of uh, a, you know in the program through a security champion, they fill out a scorecard, and this is a really strong way of actually getting that visibility through teams. But a scorecard is essentially a self assessment from a, a security champion of their team, saying areas that they are doing stuff in, areas that they're not doing stuff in. At, various levels and it's a really strong way of actually being able to show the visibilities to the security team about what is being done and what is not being done because very very often you know you talk to a security team and they say yeah this is what our develop developers are actually doing but when you actually come down to it they're not doing that you just think they're doing that and and their their viewpoint is actually quite different so there's a vast you know variety of different things you can get out of it um i would suggest maybe focusing on one or two and and starting from that definitely how, how, how about yourself Cole? In, ter in terms of the security champions program that you created why what was the kind of like goals why did you create that uh, initially definitely so i think um everything you said kind of rang true like a lot of folks wanted to learn more about security and we had like the security definition of done which basically taught developers all right here's how you do a little bit of 
you know, like uh, dynamic application security testing on your product and um, your feature and your release, right? Like, here's how you do it before you push it out the door. And um, I think like what you said, Simon, um, my, my manager, right, when I got there, he thought everyone was doing this, right? He thought mm -hmm. all of the uh, developers were doing this, all 40 of our agile teams were doing this. And it was probably closer to 12. Mm -hmm. um, so they they wanted to do the right thing. They didn't feel like they were equipped to do the right thing. They didn't usually schedule time for security testing. So like the the sort of like awareness wasn't entirely there. They're like, oh, we can skip this, right? Like security mm -hmm. definition done. Let's check the boxes. Say that we tested everything, right? So um, and you know it wasn't necessarily like out of malice, right? It was because they're developers and they have so many things to do, and their managers want to see the results. They don't want to see that they've done accessibility testing and security testing and localization testing and performance testing. Right. So although we had these definitions of done, people weren't really following them. Mm -hmm. And the communities based around those other practices I just outlined, because they, they had a similar structure to the AppSec team, um, weren't exactly engaging developers in a way that I found to be constructive. Right. Like the developers weren't excited to engage with these teams. They weren't, you know, um, they wouldn't take the time out of their day or, you know, block off their calendar for an hour, like once a month to like go and meet with these folks in a room and talk about like accessibility or localization or even security at that point. So my goal was really to establish that sort of like liaison mentality and like a security culture and security awareness because we were just really lacking it, um, you know, due to like not having like a really strong technical security leadership who was like engaging the developers, right? Like it was the the paradigm of security in a dark room making all these decisions and nobody knows where they come from, but it it's like raining down on them and they have to deal with it, right? And they... Uh, uh, you know, don't really feel comfortable speaking up or like, you know, so I, I let everybody know, like, as soon as I was starting the security pro uh, champions program, I let them know, like, this is for you, like, whatever you want to get out of it, like, you need to let me know, or I'm just going to do what I think you want, which is probably not exactly there. So folks started asking tons of random questions, like, you know, I, I talk about um, the news in a security, um, security champions meeting, I talk about the news for like 30 minutes, and we do something practical for 30 minutes, because developers wanted that hands on engagement right they wanted to like learn technical things which like I, I totally relate to that so um that was really easy for me to fulfill you know i did 30 minutes of like news wrap up and security 30 minutes of a technical exercise led by a developer who was like passionate about it and um you know it was really really popular like we we went from three people in the security community like voluntarily like three three folks who all reported to the ciso to 87 which is about half the engineering uh division mm -hmm. so yeah, my my goal was visibility. It was you know having that liaison, and um, it was you know sort of getting developers like what they want so that we could all be on the same level. And it worked really well. All the developers were doing um, the scanning themselves. You know, we reworked the program. I let them know like, hey, like if the definition of done isn't working for you or your team for any reason, like just let me know. And some folks came up and they said, hey, like we'd really like this. Hey, we'd really appreciate it if you could do that. And um, you know, working with them to build out burp routines or working with them to you know um, plan. Actually, like, you know, I I was probably one of the only people doing this, but I would get into their sprint planning meetings. Like, I'd go to all the different teams, like, not all of them because there are 40 teams, but I'd go to a lot of teams' sprint planning meetings, and I would talk to them about their features that they were developing. And we would, there in the room, before they even started writing code, before they even started designing it, we would talk about, you know, some threats, you know, some things that I think I could do or somebody else could do maybe, right? Um, or, like, even that a client customer could do inadvertently, right? Um, so I think that helped a lot because... Um, you know, there were a lot of things that, like, things stopped being sweeped under the rug. Um, folks who, you know, felt like they didn't necessarily have a voice or have a say when it came to security and security practices, you know, the folks who are making the software, right, who should probably have some sort of say, um, you know, now felt empowered to do so. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that was, uh, that was sort of why, you know, we went down that route. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love to, um, I think we covered a lot of the benefits that this can provide and, like, the goals and objectives. But um, do we want to touch on that anymore, like benefits, goals, and objectives here? I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think benefits, benefits are an interesting one, because I think there's, if we look at it from benefits of the program, um, there's, there's, you know, it's, it's very often benefits across a team and things like that. But I think one thing to probably finish off on would be benefits for the individuals. And I think when we look at that from a rewards recognition uh, kind of like point of view, I feel like that's a very, very, uh, a very, very important thing, which sometimes isn't as well looked after um, compared to other things. So I would say one of the one of the core things that people need to focus on in these programs, and and something that we've seen as actually a really good way to actually build those programs out and and grow the attendance, is to look at when an individual does something 
well does something good, you need to celebrate it. You need to be able to say, let's let's put this person's name up on, you know, that the VP mentions in an internal meeting or at a company conference or those kind of things. Let's reward people through what they're doing. And that could be through swag. It could be through going to a, going to a, a DEF CON conference. It could be, you know, going to Black Hat or, or whatever it is. Let's find ways in which we can really celebrate people's works and achievements. And I think also from a team point of view, recognizing when a team does well, why is that team doing well? What can we share as an approach that other teams can follow? So being able to almost like, you know, the paved road style approach of this really works, let's support it for other teams and make sure others can follow in those footsteps. I think those are really core for the benefits of individuals as well as teams. So there's kind of like a, a little bit also there from a from a celebration point of view. Totally agree. It's really important to celebrate those victories, especially, you know, I think when developers come into security, because I think as uh, we know, you know, security engineer, IC perspective, it feels like a thankless job sometimes. So yeah. I think celebrating those wins uh, frequently is super important. Um, so, yeah, and I totally agree with that. You know, you need to offer some sort of incentive for people to engage and come and interact. I used to make cold brew. I'd make like two gallons of cold brew like once a month and I'd bring it and it would be gone in like 60 seconds, right? Because people <laughs> people knew they're like, the security guy made his cold brew again, right? And um, everybody everybody really liked it. And um, it was a huge, huge motivator, right? Folks would like block off their calendar for the security meeting. We're like, oh, Kyle's going to bring cold brew again. Mm. Um and yeah, we also offered folks the the ability to take like a security cert right from like CompTIA. So um, mm. you know when they hit like a certain level, so you can gamify it. You can have levels, right? Like you can be a a level zero security mancer, and then you know uh, level ten, right? So you can sort of make it fun. Yeah, Comcast do a really good job of that with a belt system, like in, in education, as well as, you know, how much they're participating week on week. So that's another way of really being able to almost like provide a ladder that people can climb, which is great. I love that. So I think um, we're probably running up on time here, but maybe we can touch on this last question. Um, who needs to back a security champions program mm -hmm. for it to be successful? Execs, mm -hmm. VPs, engineers, everybody. How does that work? This needs to come from the top down. So first of all, security needs to come from the very, very top board and C-level down to say how important security is. In terms of supporting a champions program, I think one of the most important, one of the, one of the most important people who can support that is the, the lead of the engineering team. So that could be a CTO, it could be a VP of engineering, but to be able to say, I support this program and I'm willing for one person or whoever, you know, whatever the structure is, for one person, as a champion in that team to be able to spend a percentage of their time, you can't have it whereby this is an additional thing. It's a percentage of their time. They get rewarded for doing it well as part of you know the usual process of, uh, of recognition and reward of doing your job well. Um, this is something that needs to be built in to your team's, uh, team's work. So I think top down and very particularly in the engineering team from the top down, that will get filtered through the managers. And when an employee says, Hey, this is what I've done. This is how I've spent my time. People will recognize that as, you know, the right thing to do. And they're doing that because it's officially backed by the engineering team. And it's an important thing to do for the business. That is um, really, really awesome. You know, I think I would have had a, a sort of different response, you know, like, because in my experience, um, the developers are really the ones who pushed me to do this. Mm -hmm. Like the developers, you know, were so... Um, distraught with the state of things and um, their inability to affect change on the security program or their inability to push the needle on security, right? You know, despite trying, um, they just weren't armed with the knowledge, weren't armed with the capabilities. So like they really pushed me to do it. And then I was able to go to like executive, uh, you know, folks and say like, Hey, like we have, you know, this really, really um, pressing need for like more eyes on security stuff. Cause like, hello, it's just me. Right. And then we also needed to, uh sort of like figure out right like what you know developers you know felt like there were things going on that were pretty bad you know things that were overlooked things that were sort of like swept under the rug and um you know that was also a huge huge thing that where they were like hey like we need some sort of forum for this stuff like developers were actually coming to me like you know before even my first month on the job and then mm -hmm. i mean like we need a forum for discussing these security issues because like nobody's doing it and you seem like you'd like to do it and um yeah i think uh, the executive sponsorship was critical. Otherwise, mm -hmm. right, we wouldn't be able to take an hour out of everybody's month. But um, yeah, I think I think we're probably coming up on time here. So uh, I just want to thank you, Simon, um, for you know getting all of this uh, information for us. And um, anyone who hasn't checked it out, please do check out um, the PDF that we share, the Security Champions white paper. 
and um, that has been worked on by Simon, and it is, um, you know, basically him interacting with tons of thought leaders in the security space and basically pulling out um, all the, the greatest, you know, like little golden nuggets of wisdom from what it takes to run a security champions program, how to make sure it's effective, and um, basically, you know, um, nuts to bolts, like how to how to do it right. Thank you. And appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you inviting me on. I uh, really enjoyed the discussion. Thank you, Simon. This was great. We'll have to do it again. Thank you.